There we go. That works. All right, so we're going to start off with the next course. I hope everybody liked the tuna antipasto salad. Good. All right, so the next, one, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a chicken osobuco cacciatore. Now, the osobuco means, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, hole in the bone? Okay. And it's traditionally done with veal. Uh, it, we eat with a marrow is, is the del delicacy of, of the dish. Same thing applies here, only we're going we're gonna to cut the chicken in a way that the, the marrow actually comes into the sauce and it just it flavors the whole sauce, okay? So what we're using for this, for this is legs, it's chicken legs. Great thing about that is they're real cheap, okay? So you, you, can, you can make this for like 100 people for probably 20 bucks. Well, you can make it for um, 40 people for about $30, so it's not that cheap. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to is I'm going to cut the bones. Um, I'm cutting the, the the top knuckle of the bone right off of the, off of this chicken using a little uh, cleaver here. This is going to allow it when it heats up for the for the marrow to just exit right out of the end of the right out of the end of the chicken. It also makes it very easy to remove the skin once that top part's gone. Okay, and I like to do. You can do it either way, but I like to do the chicken chicken cacciatore specifically without the uh, without the skin because it has a tendency once it cooks in the tomato sauce to get soft again. I like you know I like it a little crispy, anyways. As you can tell, I like all the stuff that's not good for me. <laughs> all right, let me get rid of this here. Um. Got a little salt and pepper that I'm going to put right on the chicken. And then I'm going to go right into a bowl of flour. This is just regular all-purpose flour. Now, if you remember before, on the last dish we made, uh, was it the last dish? No, on the etouffee, we made a roux. And the roux was designed to thicken the sauce. Well, the same thing applies when you're sauteing. When you saute and you dredge something or coat something in flour, the flour ends up in the oil and it makes a little bit of a roux. And so we're going to leave that in there and, and, and you can even add a little flour if you wanted to, okay? And it's just going to, it's going to add into, into the, um, the flour and it'll brown. Now that's a darker, it's a darker roux when you do this. Excuse me, I'm going to rinse my hands off. Hi. Ow. Just to dry off, thanks. So this will this will get a little bit darker, and I'm going to brown the chicken, and I'm not going to turn it over with my hands because it's going to be hot. I go over this a thousand times and I forget something every time. And it was it's written on a yellow piece of paper, tongs. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm browning this chicken. Um, I've got it on a I've got it on high heat. And all I'm trying to do is sear the chicken so that all the juices pretty much stay in there. Into the meat. It tightens it up. Brown it up good there. While that's while that's browning, I'm going to cut up some vegetables. Again, with the peppers and the onions. Now you can dice these, or you can use them sliced. I like them diced for this particular recipe, but when I'm doing cacciatore with the whole chicken, I usually leave them in whole pieces or, or, or julienne strips. turn here, they're starting to brown. Can you see the color in that roux? At the bottom right here. That's the that's the roux changing. We're going to a darker roux. Add a little bit more oil to that. Except 
excuse me? Yes, yeah, and Rue is like the whole, everything Cajun has Rue, it seems like. Right, oil, you can use oil, use, use butter. Duck fat, anything. So I've got this browning. That looks pretty good. What I've got here is I've got a casserole. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these chicken pieces right into the, uh, into the casserole. Good enough. Got my vegetables right into the oil that's already in there. Got peppers and onions. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic. Just a touch more olive oil. I don't know if anyone was here, but I lit this on fire. You were, you guys, you guys were here. We had people running for the exits. <laughs> this table here was the one that they, everybody went back. I was right here. It was crazy. <laughs> you wanted a show. And what I've got here is I've got a can. Uh, uh, a, this is a can of chef tomatoes. Okay, they're just all chopped, sliced, seeded tomatoes. I'm going to add them to this mix of um, vegetables that I've sauteed off a, just a little bit. Now a great secret that you can use for this, to, it just changes the whole dynamic, is if you take in the oil, before you add the vegetables, just put a little piece of salt pork and crisp it up for a few minutes, it totally changes the dish, okay? That's how we do it. I, unfortunately, I didn't have any, or I would have, I guess I could have faked it with something, but it, it just doesn't taste. It, it doesn't taste the same, so you'd know. I'm going to add a little bit of salt into that, salt and pepper into the tomatoes. Anytime I cook with tomatoes, tomatoes go basil, tomatoes, t salt. It's all. It's all. One goes without the other, but one doesn't usually go without the other. Now I've got a little bit. I'm going to put some on here, the tomatoes right onto the uh, casserole. Got a little bit more of this white wine. Somebody was asking me what this is. This is actually the bottom of three bottles of white wine, so I don't know what's in it. White wine. But we're just going to add a little bit. Yeah, it's house wine. Absolutely. Yeah. And now I'm just going to go ahead and cover this casserole. I guess I needed a little bit bigger of a casserole. Okay, now I've got the oven preheat, preheated back there to 300, 350 degrees, depending on your oven. And make sure that the bones are all facing in because they're going to they're gonna let all the uh, flavor out and you want it to go into the, into the casserole. Okay, so now I'm going to send this back into the oven for probably 25 minutes or so. And all, it's, it's really all this fast. It's, it, seems, it seems like it's going really fast to me, and it is, but it's what happens. It's, it's how we do it. Italian food is just simple, fresh, fast ingredients, and fun to eat. So that's, you know, that's what we do here. Then the rizzo. And so when it comes out, this is what you've got. Okay? The casseroles baked down. Um, what's that? Okay. You want to see that? Now, some people, is that good? Can you see that? Looks good, right? Okay. So, you can have this with pasta. You can have this with polenta. Um, we've got some people mentioned tonight that they're really not big fans of pasta tonight, so we're going to go ahead and serve this on uh, risotto tonight. And the way we make our risotto, we make it with a little bit of pancetta. Um, not pancetta, I'm sorry, prosciutto. And we, and we crisp it up real good and then finish that off. Um, make it nice and creamy. So we do that. And here is the, just a little polenta. And so when you serve this, you serve that. All 
All right. Okay. And that's what we've got. Is that on the screen? All right. Looks pretty good. All right. We're going to serve Dana.